Hey, welcome back to Calculus. We're continuing our work in section 2.8 with this second video. There's going to be three of them total. The second video, we're going to be talking about the derivative as a function, focusing on elements of its graph. All right, so I've cut out some more of the objectives from the Canvas page. In this one, uh, we're going to talk about sketching the graph of a derivative, looking at graphs and derivatives, uh, graphs of derivatives side by side, sketching one from the other. Uh, this time, I promise, I said I'd do it in the last one, but I forgot. But uh, uh, this time, I'm going to talk about this Newton versus Leibniz notation for the derivative that'll be at the end and then I want to talk about what it means for a function to be differentiable differentiable just means that it has a derivative but what does that mean about the function what does it mean about the graph and how can I look at a graph of a function and determine whether it is or isn't differentiable at some spot similar to the way we did with continuity okay so so that's the plan let's get going so we don't make it long uh, uh, let's start by recalling the the uh, the limit definition of the derivative it's the the limit of this difference quotient so I think of this as the change in f over the change in x uh, so so it's the slope f prime of x is the slope of the tangent line to the graph of a function and I'm no longer specifying a f of a because I want to think of this derivative itself as a function all right so so let's start by looking at an image from your text I hope it's going to fit on the screen I might have to shrink this just a little bit. Can I shrink? Uh, no, it's good. Uh, well, right there is good. So, so what are we looking at? We're looking at the graph of a function, y equals f of x. It's drawn kind of in, I don't know, not blue, but teal up there. So, so that's the graph on the top here, the graph of the function, f of x. And then below it, the author's graphed its derivative. All right, and one of the skills that you're trying to develop in this section, and it's not an easy skill to develop, it takes a lot of practice, is how could we kind of anticipate what this derivative graph looks like just by knowing what the blue one looks like? We don't have a formula. So the author is kind of labeled here uh, uh, some ways to get thinking about that. Everywhere in this picture, I'm thinking derivative is slope, right? So, so that's my big sort of clue, is that the derivative is the slope of the tangent lines. So the y-coordinates down here, the y-coordinates in the picture that's drawn in this pink color are the slopes, the slopes of the corresponding points on the blue curve. So it's nice that the authors kind of stacked them vertically because you can pick a point. I'm going to pick on this point called A. I know it's small font depending on the screen you're looking at, but I'm looking at this point called A, and I can see that the tangent line is zero. The, the slope of it is zero. The tangent line is horizontal at that point A. So the corresponding point on the derivative should have y coordinate zero. Because I'm going to say this a lot, I'm probably going to annoy you by the time this is over, but the y-coordinates on the graph below are the slopes of the graph above. So this y-coordinate down here at the point labeled a prime is zero because the slope at the corresponding point is zero. So the author's done that for these other ones. This y-coordinate is zero because that slope is zero. That y-coordinate is zero because that slope is zero. In fact, he's labeled them all. There's three places up here where the slope is zero, and so the derivative has three x-intercepts. All right, let's even delve in some more. Let, let's look between uh, uh, this horizontal tangent line at A and the horizontal tangent line at B. I'll highlight the section of the curve temporarily, right? Everywhere on that section of the curve, the derivative is positive. Well, not at A and B, but, but everywhere in between. So, so uh, the derivative is positive because the tangent slopes are positive there. So notice that the derivative down here has y-coordinates that are always above the axis because the y-coordinates down here are the slopes of the, of the points up there. Uh, you can even kind of say more. This is getting a little subtle, but these slopes are very close to zero. They get more and more positive, but right around there, they stop getting more and more positive and they kind of start getting small again. You can see that down here. The slopes got bigger and bigger and bigger positive until they started getting smaller again. All right, so you should stop this video and think about these kinds of things, but uh, I'll just say one more thing maybe before you stop. What you're trying to think about is everything down here is describing slopes above. So if we look, uh, let me trace out the blue curve from left to right, and you, you look at the tracer and think about the signs of the derivatives. I'll say the signs out loud. The derivatives are negative, they're negative, they're negative, all those slopes are negative. Now the slope is zero. Now it's positive, becoming more positive, but flattening off zero again. Now the slopes are negative, getting more and more negative until now they've turned around. Yeah, now they're zero again. 
So down here, everything I was saying about positive and negative was the y coordinates on this derivative graph. Okay. Uh, uh, one other thing I guess I should mention here anyway is the authors just picked this point P. It looks like it has some positive slope and, and according to the author that slope is about one and a half. So the y coordinate up here is, a, is, is, sorry, I'm saying this backwards. The slope up here is about one and a half. So the y coordinate on this graph down here is about one and a half. All right, it's a subtle relationship. Let's go back to some things we did with formulas. Uh, you remember in the first video of this lecture, I don't know how long ago you watched it, I just made it about a half an hour ago. Uh, uh, in the first video of this lecture, we computed by hand that if f of x was equal to x squared, uh, uh, then its derivative was 2x. So, so I've drawn the function here in blue and I've drawn its derivative in red and let's just have the same kind of conversation. Look, the, the parabola x squared just has one tangent line that's horizontal. It's right there. I just drew a little piece of the tangent line. It's horizontal right there at zero. That's the one place where the derivative is zero. Yeah? Notice that uh, if x is positive, all of the tangent slopes on the parabola are positive. Well, yeah, the derivative is positive when x is positive, and vice versa. So this is another example for you to pause and kind of make sure that you understand that the picture over here, that the y-coordinates are slopes of the picture on the left. I stacked them uh, left and right to make them fit better here. But if you pick a y coordinate over here, like if you pick the y coordinate, uh, 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 or sorry, x coordinate uh, two, uh, uh, two times two is four. Yeah, so when x is two, the y coordinate over here is four. So what is that four? That is the slope of the tangent line over here when x is two f prime of 2 is equal to 4. What else did we do? Remember the constant function? The constant function g of x, constant function g of x was 7. Uh, I, I hope it's clear. I mean, I plotted one thing, but you can change this constant to any value. Its graph is also a horizontal line. The constant value is just the y-intercept. This is the y-intercept at 7. Its derivative we computed was identically 0. That makes sense geometrically, I'm gonna call it. We're having kind of a geometric discussion about the derivative because the tangent slope over here is zero everywhere because this is a line of slope zero. The tangent line to a line is, is itself. Good, no need to fuss about it. How about this third example? H of x was the square root of x. We computed its derivative was one over two square root of x. I've plotted both of those things. Let's just look. Uh, uh, notice that uh, uh, the tangent slopes are always positive on, on h of x. They're always positive on h of x. Uh, uh, this graph doesn't have any coordinates below the x-axis. It's consistent. As, as x goes to infinity, the square root graph is kind of getting flatter and flatter. The tangent slopes are getting closer and closer to zero. That's consistent with the derivative over here. As, as you look at x going to zero from the left, down here at the origin, the tangent line to the square root function at the origin is the y-axis, it's vertical. It has no slope, yeah? The ver vertical line slope is not defined. The formula is telling you that in the derivative, if you try to let x equal zero, then this is undefined. In fact, maybe I should kind of circle back and review some of our previous notation, uh, uh, our ideas from um, the previous section rather, sorry about that. Things are moving when I don't want them to. Oh, come on. Uh, 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 we could take a look at the limit as x goes to zero from the right, anyway, of the derivative, h prime of x, and we see it's positive infinity. Uh, uh, so that means that the uh, tangent line at, at the origin over here is vertical. Yeah, cool. So our ideas are all sort of con conversing together. We have this really fantastically rich language to describe these phenomena to each other. So it's cool. Nice. Okay, let's look at what we did. We remember this one? We worked hard for this one. Uh, 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 it was an algebraic challenge for us to take the, this rational function x minus one over x plus one. I promise so I'll, give you, I'll give you better ways to do this, but we worked hard and computed its derivative was, was two over x squared plus one quantity squared. I've plotted them both. Stop the video and just have the same kind of conversation that, that uh, I've been having with you on your own. Does it, does it make sense? Uh, the, 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 these pictures reconcile, I'll tell you what I'm thinking. If uh, you stop it, think about it yourself and then come back. Now I'll tell you what I'm thinking. Uh, uh, on this piece of the curve, all the tangent lines are positive slope. 
maybe what I'm doing with the laser pointer isn't handy, that that's a positive slope line, that's a positive slope line, that's a positive slope line, they're all positive. These are all positive. Those are all positive slope lines. So, so, so this thing has no negative y coordinates, that's consistent. Uh, uh, at x equals negative one, there's a vertical asymptote. This thing is becoming vertical. The tangent lines are becoming vertical. Look over here, the slopes are getting crazy big. Uh, uh, the horizontal asymptote, another review chance here. What do I mean by a horizontal asymptote? For a rational function, the limit as x goes to plus or minus infinity. Uh, uh, what's our theorem about rational functions tell you that limit is? I hope you can answer it. Stop it. You got to keep your finger on the pause button when you watch my videos. I talk a mile a minute and I always tell you to stop it, but that limit is one. So the horizontal asymptote in this picture, I'm going to ruin the nice picture and draw it in there. It's y equals one. And notice that as x approaches plus or minus infinity, the tangent slopes are becoming flat. The curve is flattening off. That's consistent with the y coordinates over here becoming close to zero. All right, I'm throwing a lot of information at you. I hope you're stopping it and I hope you're gonna think about this well beyond just watching this short video on it because this is super subtle, but this is the beginning of our new relationship to understand uh, uh, the very subtle uh, uh, but, but important uh, relationships between a function and its derivative. The derivative is gonna give us all kinds of information about the function and vice versa. Here's kind of something that I'm going to try to do with you in your book. I don't want to take too much time to do this here, but if you just sort of started cold and said, well, here's the function, what's its derivative look like? I can't really answer that up to a scale. I have no, I have no scale on the axis, but I could tell you some things like right there, there's a flat tangent line. So I know for sure the derivative is zero there. And uh, at that flat tangent line, the tangent slopes changed from being positive to negative. So, so if I was going to draw the graph of the derivative, I know it's crossing that zero that way. Stop and see if that makes sense. Ask me about it in an office hour. Uh, there's a flat tangent line right there. Yeah, I didn't line those up very well. And the tangent slopes are changing from, can you say it? They're changing from negative to positive there. So the derivative is crossing back. Uh, it looks to me like in between those two zeros, all these tangent slopes are negative. And the steepest negative one looks like it's right there. I don't know what that steepest negative one is. It's got to be some value, uh, some negative value. I'm just going to kind of draw it like it's right there. But I don't know that. I don't know the scale. Likewise, the uh, steepest positive tangent slopes look like they're happening here and here. These positive slopes are flattening off. These positive slopes are not as steep. So, so if you kind of put all that together, I don't know the extent to which I'm scaling this picture right, but it seems to me like the derivative also has this kind of wavy pattern. Remind me to talk about this in the, in the future, but for right now, I'm just gonna go, well, you know, up to a scale, that should be kind of, it's, the signs are consistent. Wherever this thing has flat, oops, pardon me. Wherever this thing has flat tangent lines, my derivative is zero. Yeah, wherever this thing's tangent lines have negative slopes, my derivative is negative. Wherever the tangent lines are positive slopes, my derivative is positive. It's consistent as far as that stuff goes. Cool. All right. So I said this at the beginning, but let me just say it again, that I, if I say a function's differentiable at some point, I just mean that the derivative exists, that that limit exists. Uh, so so how, how could a function fail to be differentiable? You know, how could it fail to have a tangent slope? That's kind of the, uh, uh, these are th showing sort of three ways. We already talked about one of them. If, if the tangent slope, if the tangent line is a vertical line, the tangent line is a vertical line. A vertical line doesn't have any slope. The slope of it is undefined. Yeah, there's no slope of a vertical line, so it can't have a derivative there. Uh, think about a finite jump discontinuity, like the picture in the middle. I'm working right to left uh, spontaneously. Uh, there's perfectly fine tangent lines to this curve everywhere, and it looks like their slope is about zero from that way, but the, the trouble is, uh, um, from the other way, they might not be the same. So, so you, or, or even if these slopes are the same, how can you have one tangent line when there's sort of two quote unquote y coordinates on the graph? So you can't have a single tangent line. Tangent lines have to be tangent kind of on both sides. And so, so at a finite just jump discontinuity, you just can't have one. 
And then over here, uh, if you think about tangent lines, well, they look like they're trying to be positive from the left and they're, they're trying to be uh, a negative from the right. So that limit's just not gonna exist. So anytime you have a corner, sometimes you'll see books call such things uh, a cusp in the curve. You can't have a derivative there. The, the direction of the curve changed kind of discontinuous, discontinuously. Yeah, so, so those are sort of three ways that the function can fail to be differentiable. And that's, it's, I mean, functions are complicated. <laughs> uh, so, so I can't, can't make general statements about all functions of a real variable. But for the most part, for the kinds of things that we'll see in this class, that, that's, that's the reasons that a function could fail to be differentiable. So if you were looking at a graph and looking for places where the derivative doesn't exist, you're looking for these phenomena. In particular, uh, if you're differentiable at some point, you have to be continuous. It's, it's an important theorem. You know, I'm using this kind of logic language as sort of if then, but, but the, if any function that has derivatives everywhere or a derivative at a point, it necessarily is continuous at that point. The limit has to exist and, ex and equal the function value. It has to be true. I'm not gonna give you a proof of that in this class because we don't, we don't sort of have the, the rigorous definitions I would need to give you any kind of argument. But, but I tried to kind of explain it when we were looking at this picture. That, that if you're not continuous, if, you, if you, you, you sort of have a rip in the graph or an asymptote or something like that, then you can't have a tangent line. That's my, my intuitive proof of this fact. Okay. Another thing I want to tell you is this important idea that uh, differentiability means that a function is kind of locally linear. This is a more precise way of saying what I was talking about tangent lines above. Locally linear means that the tangent line is a good approximation. not defining what I mean by good, but uh, I think you know what I mean. It's, it's uh, the tangent line and the graph are very, very close to each other. Remember when we looked at Desmos and I was using the phrase that as you zoom in, they become indistinguishable. So the picture on the left here is sort of showing that you have a function that's differentiable at a point and the author, I, I kind of really like this imagery, zooming in on it and look at a, at a small enough scale, you can't distinguish that curve from a straight line. That's what differentiable means for a curve. Uh, that that uh, if on a very small scale, it looks straight. It's locally linear, okay? Linear just means straight. Uh, compare that to this cusp over here. No matter how much you zoom in on that cusp, it never looks like a straight line. You're always gonna be able to see that broken part. All right, so, so that's kind of a, a nice thing to keep in mind, that differentiable functions at a small enough scale look like they're straight lines. So, so you can approximate them with straight lines, and that's good news because straight lines, linear functions, are the easiest functions to use. Here, I know this is getting long. There's a real quick calculation that the absolute value function isn't differentiable. The absolute value function has a cusp, so it's not differentiable at the origin. It's differentiable everywhere but the origin. But if you took a look at the limit definition, yeah, I'll let you do this. I'm, I'm, this video is getting long, so I'm gonna just kind of skip over this quickly and you can stare at this, but the numerator is absolute h over h, and we took that limit before from the left and the right. Uh, from the right, it was one, uh, and from the left, it's minus one. So that limit doesn't exist. So, so there's the sort of algebraic confirmation that that cusp for the absolute value function. Okay, so we're almost done. I, I just wanted to end with the promised uh, um, explanation of these two notations. Uh, a calculus kind of is attributed to two founding fathers, the English uh, mathematician physicist Isaac Newton and the French uh, uh, mathematician Gottfried Leibniz. Uh, uh, and they d developed the calculus in sort of different angles and, 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 and at different times slightly, uh, but they used different notation. Let me just say that. I'm not, not the greatest math historian, so instead of putting something on YouTube that's wrong, uh, I'll just say that they didn't use the same notation. Newton, uh, this isn't even really Newton's exact notation, but I'm going to call it Newtonian notation, and it's this idea of you mark the function with this prime. I think Newton himself used a dot, but, but so if the function is y equals f of x, y prime, f prime of x, it's the way Newton, our Newtonian notation, we denote the derivative, the rate of change. Okay, it's what we've been using. It's nice, it fits in a single line. Uh, there's, there's also the Leibniz notation. In the Leibniz notation, you write derivatives like they're these little fractions. They're, they're not actual fractions, but, but they, uh, they come in one piece. But you, know, you just pronounce this dy by dx or dy over dx, df over dx. Again, y is the function f of x. 
So, so they're sort of the uh, analogs of putting the prime. You can use the y, you can use the function name. Uh, uh, sometimes if you're trying to emphasize it's a function, you can throw an of x on there. Yeah. Uh, uh, so that's the Leibniz notation. It's nice because it kind of reminds you of, you know, derivatives are change in y over change in x. They're slopes. So in applications, especially when you're thinking about units, I kind of like the uh, uh, Leibniz notation because it reminds me the units are units uh, change in y over change in x. Uh, uh, the Newtonian no notation is also nice. We'll, we'll keep using it. And both have stuck around because they facilitate different kinds of computations. And so you can't get away with only knowing one of them and not the other. So we'll end here. I'll just write some in, in Leibniz notation, some of our previous calculations, right? We've calculated that if uh, you take the squaring function, its derivative is 2x. So, so instead of writing f of x is x squared, uh, f prime of x is 2x, like we wrote above. I can write it again here if you want to real quick. So we used to write this like, f, well, and we still will, f of x equals x squared, f prime of x equals 2x. Those are the same, same thing stated in the two notation schemes. Newtonian uh, in pink, uh, Leibniz in black. You can check out the last one. Square roots derivative is one over two times the square root of x. Okay, we got one more video in this section where I got to tell you about uh, something called higher derivatives uh, and at least peek into one of their applications in physics. It'll be shorter than this one. Thanks.